So I think there are certain parallels there for in sessional teachers in the disciplines also. Um, are we also stepping out of safer waters into this open sea and swimming with other fish? Um, so a lot of this comes from my own personal experience of um, moving from pre-sessional to in-sessional. So I'm just gonna talk through a little bit of that now, not because I'm particularly interesting, but it's just an example of a case study and it may chime with your experience or it may be quite different. But I wanted to see how far does my personal experience fit with those assumptions that I hold about in-sessional teachers. So I, I started on my first pre-sessional course in 2002, and I assumed that it was going to be much later that I started on ISC, but when I checked back, it was actually the same year. And the following year, I started teaching on the MAT Southern Applied Linguistics programmes. And then more recently, I was appointed as the interim in-sessional co-director at the University of Liverpool. And en route, as part of that transition, I've just added a few extra things that happened along the way to do with qualifications. Um, then finishing with MA teaching, but moving on to a permanent contract at the University of Liverpool um, as an EAP teacher. And in the middle of all of that, starting a PhD and managing to complete it some years later, part-time. So in some aspects, um, I fit the assumptions, but not exactly. Um, I didn't have several years of experience of teaching EAP before I started teaching on in-sessional. Um, so I don't know how typical my experience is. And that, again, I think that's something that we can talk about a bit more in the breakout rooms when we think about our own transition into in-sessional teaching. So thinking about that transition, um, going back to my initial experience, every summer as a PSE teacher, I attended a full three-day induction for which I was paid. Um, in contrast to that, um, when I started on in-sessional, I was given some classes, given some information about the cohorts, told which room I was teaching in, what the admin processes were, pointed in the direction of some previous materials, if they existed. Um, and I was given support if I asked for it. Um, and I don't think this experience is unusual. It's just a description of how it was. Um, but it suggested that somehow becoming an ISC teacher is something which happens by osmosis, and there may be some truth in that. Um, it could also be influenced by contract status. At the time, I would have been working on um, a temporary, well, not even a contract, um, on an hourly paid basis. So it seems to me that at the time when EAP practitioners are facing new challenges, and a new type of teaching, in my experience, there seems to have been a tendency to step away from the teacher with an expectation that they would get on with it and shout if there were any problems. So I think a degree of autonomy is a good thing. And on ISC, you need it and it can be very empowering. But there is a balance to be struck between that and a teacher feeling slightly marooned. Um, and so although the process of induction on ISC soon moved to become more formalized for new employees, it still didn't seem to be addressing the shift in gear for teachers from pre-sessional to in-sessional. So from being an hourly paid in-sessional teacher to finally obtaining a permanent contract 11 years later, to currently being in an interim post as co-director of in-sessional, 
we started to wonder what we could do to improve things in terms of teacher development for in-session teachers. And we set about putting together a more comprehensive series of inset sessions. And last year was our first attempt at doing this in a systematic and sustained way. So we felt that the terminology um, induction didn't really fully capture what we were aiming at. Um, partly because several of the teachers had already been working on in-sessional for a number of years. And there was also a mixture of newly arrived, recently um, returning or more established members of the team. So we, we opted for inset, in-service teacher training. And the process of designing the inset was very much a collaboration with the team. There were specific areas that we knew we'd have to focus on, such as familiarization with different online platforms like Teams and Canvas, but also focus on themes that were requested and suggested by the ISE teaching team. So it was very um, much designed by the people who were taking part in these sessions. It was clear who the session was aimed at. So some sessions might be for everyone on the team. Some might have been only for people with discipline specific classes. Um, some sessions were optional. They were hosted and co-hosted by different members of the team. And there was really good recognition of the expertise on the team and coming onto the team. It was informed by ISE students, for example, how their needs are established in the one-to-one -one writing consultations, and that might feed into the design of more general and more discipline-specific classes. So it was very much looking at course design as informed by needs analysis. And it was also informed by theory and EAP frameworks. But the starting point was always to look at what we actually do in terms of our processes and output and evaluate them with reference to frameworks. So rather than take the frameworks and try to map what we do onto them so that we can sort of maximize our score, we wanted to genuinely check if what we do aligns with EAP theory and approaches and identify where it might not so that we can improve. So Particular ways of doing this might be, for example, agreeing our own criteria for effective in-sessional materials and then comparing this with the TEAP competency framework or the BALIB accreditation scheme criteria. And this also enabled a, a kind of critical engagement with our own approach and with the frameworks themselves. Um, <clears throat> another approach we took was to look back at various iterations of our tutor handbook and see how our approach had developed and where it needed to develop further and to help us evaluate some of the changes which had been introduced and whether they were working or not. We also looked back at relevant extracts from our previous Bali accreditation reports and considered whether in sessional would still merit the positive feedback and what we considered um, what you know what we had done to address any of their constructive suggestions also so it was very much intuitive collaborative with a, a clear format which i'll talk about shortly um, and involved by theory but it's it's also something which evolved i can't say we started off with a grand plan it's something that we built together and the support still there um, and perhaps being online is another factor which has meant that we've tried to build that support in more systematically. And another difference between then and now is that the entire team have got permanent contracts, which was certainly not the case in 2002. So it's just sort of putting this in context of, of how things have changed in terms of the employment situation for ISC teachers as well. So what we 
developed was what we call Liverpool ISE INSET framework. Um, and I'm just looking at the example, which um, was based on the academic year, just gone. So we had 11 sessions in total, which ran from September to late January. It was very much front loaded at the beginning of the academic year. Each session was allocated 90 minutes, but it actually often ran to two hours or more. There were pre, during and post session activities and materials. So sometimes there might be some suggested reading for afterwards, um, or people would prepare things to bring to the inset session. And the materials were very much co-constructed during the session. So we would start off with a, um, a framework, but quite often what we ended up with was the input of everybody during the inset session, um, where we would all sort of pile in with our suggestions, and then the slides would just sort of grow and grow and grow. So it was very much, um, I think, what they call transformative learning. And it had certain characteristics. There was clear needs um, that determined what we would cover in these sessions. And we wanted to make very strong links with in-sessional practice and theory. So quite often sessions that we were looking at seemed to tie in quite naturally with things that we had been reading in our EAP Journal Club. And it was really nice to see that, that crossover and connection and very much a work in progress. So say so we didn't start off with a grand plan and a set of completed sessions, it, it very much evolved. And I think this idea of the, the transformative learning aspect is a, perhaps another connection or another parallel with us as EAP teacher practitioners and our EAP students that we're very much learning as we go along, but learning together. So in a moment, I'm going to show you a, a slide which has got an overview of the different sessions that we um, have done so far. And most of these are from the previous academic year. Just give you a moment to have a look at that. So just general observation, the sessions are predominantly focused on pedagogy and all the other areas seem to feed into the pedagogy. And there's overlap between many of these things also. And we, we found that as we were dealing with them. So it is a bit artificial to um, separate something like syllabus design from liaising with departments. And number eight has got a little star next to it, the Teachers Forum material share and peer feedback, because it's something that we try to do on a more regular basis. And we found that this has been really useful for people to um, get some peer feedback. I think that might relate back to Claire's comment earlier in the chat, am I doing this right? Um, and the need to be able to check that with your colleagues. And I think, as Carol mentioned at the start, there's often quite a lot of focus on pre-session induction and people have more experience of that. And I think that's reflected also in, in some events um, and how much focus there is on in-sessional teacher induction. So this, this is an attempt to shine a light on the in-sessional teacher inset. And just as a point,